So good morning. Um, I came here to talk to you. Thanks. <laughs> I th came here to talk to you about web services, um, in particular your data, who you're giving your data to, and what they can do with it. Um, but as I was writing the talk, I really thought maybe I should have called the talk "Pick Up the Poop," because in my household we have a task called picking up the dog poop, and the only one who wants to do it is my three-year-old because he's at the age where poop is really funny. Um, but we don't let him do it for obvious reasons. So he's stuck with the job of walking around the backyard going, poop! And then my nine-year-old has to go and get it. Um, so I feel a little bit today like I'm pointing at the poop and yelling, poop! And waiting for somebody else to pick it up. So this is a talk to encourage all of you to help pick up the dog poop, but to encourage myself as well. Um, so we're all in this together. I think we've all gotten a bit lazy. Um, I, I think we now finally have a, when it comes to web services, we have a free software stack. Um, most of us use 100% free software on our laptops, or you should. Um, you can use free software and services, it, free software and servers. Um, but when it comes to web services, we've gotten lazy. And in, in the free software world, we have the whole stack, and it took a lot of work from a lot of people. Um, so a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices to make sure that we could use free software on our laptop. Um, I remember my first Guadic, um was in Copenhagen in about 2001. And I was in the hacking lab, and I must not have put mute on my laptop. And it made that really embarrassing noise when I turned it on. That noise you all know, that little Windows boot up noise. So of course, the whole room turned and stared at me. Um, and people used to ask me, why aren't you using free software on your laptop? This was back in 2001. And I would give excuses like, I can't dial in with my modem from my hotel room, can't get my job done, um, I can't schedule meetings with my colleagues, um, and, and so I can't use free software on the desktop. But there were some people that did it anyway. They made sacrifices. They spent three hours in their hotel room at night trying to dial in or trying to make it work. And it's thanks to them that we now have freedom. Freedom on our desktops, freedom in our servers. We have software freedom. And I think when it comes to web services, we're not doing that. And so some of those people that did it for free software, they did it because they believe all software should be free. Um, so they believe we all have a right to use technology. We all have a right to use software, um, regardless of how much money we have, regardless of our abilities, um, regardless of what language we speak. And they work really hard to make sure that we have a free software stack. Other th of, others of them did it because they were tired of seeing the blue screen of death and they just wanted something that worked, and they wanted to make sure that if it didn't work, they had the ability to fix it. And I think this is the reason we've gotten lazy with web services. Because there's so many of them, there's bound to be one that just works. And so we don't have the blue screen of death to make us groan and make sure that we have free alternatives to web services. So we've gotten lazy. Um, so how many of you here use probably a, a web service, a web-based mail client? And how many of you use some kind of proprietary web-based um, social networking site, like a Twitter or a Facebook? Judging from the tweets going by, a lot of you. <laughs> so how many of your worst nightmare would be to wake up and read a message like this? And this is a real message that one of my friends got. For your security, we may temporarily disable access to your account. Couldn't log in to their, to their mail at all. Here's another one, real message. We will not be able to reactivate your account for any reason. This is a social networking site, one where all their friends were and where they got all their friends' email addresses from. So how many of you back up your email to your own personal server, something under your control? Awesome. Quite a few of you, but a lot less of you than that had webmail. How many of you have an alternate way to get your email so you could easily redirect it to somewhere else? Okay, quite a few of you again, but not all of you. Um, or how many of you would just scream if that happened and, and start calling all of your colleagues and friends saying, don't email me there anymore? So if any of these strike fear in your heart, and they should, it's, it's time to think about your freedom and who has your data and what they're allowed to do with it. Um, if you upload your pictures, are they, are they really still yours or do they also belong to somebody else? It's, it's time to start talking and thinking about freedom. So I'm gonna, there's, there's a couple um, web services, web applications that are doing a good job. I'll mention them briefly, and then I'll talk about some of the things you should think about when you pick a web service. 
Um, but I encourage you all day today, there's a ton of great talks about the cloud, about web services. Um, we're having some lightning talks here this afternoon about web services and free software. Go to those talks and all day be thinking about your freedoms, your data, your rights, and ask questions of the speakers. So one of the applications, the web services, that I think is doing a good job is Adenica. Um, so if you use Twitter, it's, it's like Twitter, but it's written under an AGPL license. It's open source, free software. Your, your dents are Creative Commons, and they're very clear about who owns the rights and what it's licensed under, and they make it very obvious to you when you sign up. Um, so if you use microblogging, I encourage you to use Adentica. Um, another one that we just launched yesterday, I believe, is Tomboy Online. Um, this is from the GNOME project. If you use Tomboy, it's an online, it's a, it's a note-taking application for your, for your desktop. And Tomboy Online now allows you to synchronize your, your notes between your desktop and your laptop and to share them with your friends. And what's really unique about this one, it's written in the AGPL. Um, we've been thinking about freedom and web services and what it means for a free software project to be doing a web service. Um, but it's also hosted by the GNOME Foundation. Um, so it's hosted by someone who's an organization whose primary um, goal is not to make money, but its primary goal is to promote freedom and to make sure people have access to technology. So if, if you have thoughts, please join the project. Um, please send mail. So now I want to encourage all of you to help me pick up the poop um, so we're not just like my three-year-old running around with glee and pointing it out. Um, and the three things I'll give you to think about, um, in addition to all the things you'll hear today, is the first one is licenses. So when you use a web service, find out what license that software is under. Um, and if you can't find out what license that software is under, it's probably under a proprietary license. Um, and I highly recommend the AGPL because it's copyleft like the GPL, um, but it also means that distributing over the web is distribution. So it adds all of the features of GPL to kind of the web service world. The second one I would encourage you to think about really strongly is your data. Um, this is a picture of a CD where someone has tried to burn it to get all the data off so nobody can possibly read it. It happens to be very pretty, too. Um, so when you sign up for a web service, you probably don't read, or very few of us read, the agreement that says, who owns your data now? Or probably you read to the point that says you still own it and you're happy. Um, but the web service probably owns your data as well. And if you leave that web service, all of your pictures or all of your tweets or all of your whatever probably still belongs to them. Um, so they might still have those baby pictures of your kid. I don't know if you've heard the Facebook story of the man that logged into Facebook and he saw the dating um, advertisement and his wife's picture was in it. Um, and she had given permission for her profile picture to be used in her friend's ads. So be sure you know what, what your data is. And if you decide to leave a web service, what happens? Can you delete it all? Can you remove it all? Is it in a format that if you decided to leave this particular mail web service, you can move to another mail web service easy? Or will it be impossible to import all of your messages and all of, all of your pictures to the new service? So think about it. And then kind of along the same lines, the third thing I would encourage you to think about is make sure you're not locked into whichever web service you pick. So even if you pick a proprietary web service, one that's not using an open source license, um, one that um, th keeps your data forever, make sure that if you decide to move, like if you wanted to move from Twitter to Adenica or Gmail to Hotmail, make sure you could move. Um, so make sure you're not giving away your future choices by the choice you make today. So those are the three things I'd encourage you to think about today. Um, blog, tweet about all the things you learned today about web services and free software and what everybody here in this room and everybody out in the world should be thinking about because um, we can all make a difference just like those first people made a difference um, in making sure that we had an entire free software stack. So think about your freedom, help pick up the dog poop, and uh, take a big stretch and then get ready to go.